Welcome again, we have Shani here. What are we making today, Shani? We are making something called malabi, which Ooh. is a milk pudding. Okay. So it's special in that it's scented with rose water, so it's gonna have a particular taste that some people like, some people don't. I can smell it. I know you have it here, and I can yes. smell the rose water, vanilla. Mm hmm. So, okay. because you started, let's just start with the ingredients. Okay. Okay. So, in this cute little container here, we have two cups of milk. Okay. We have some chopped nuts here, and that's walnuts, pecans, peanuts. Any kind of nut you can find. Okay. Okay, and in that plate next to you, we have one fourth cup sugar. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. just we have just oh, two tablespoons of water, and we're gonna use this plate to actually mix. Mm -hmm. Okay, and next to it, and we have two and a half tablespoons of cornstarch, a thickener. Okay, and then we have a tablespoon of rose water extract. And finally, we have some vanilla extract, one tablespoon. And before I forget, our red food coloring. Awesome. Yes, this is, gonna, what, this is what's gonna give our syrup a pretty pink red color. color. Okay. okay. So you ready? Yeah, let's go. All right, so first thing you have to do, have some plates by your, uh, cups, glasses by your side to put the pudding in after it's done. So first thing after that is we're gonna turn on the heat, okay? Okay, okay so we have our heat, our flame at about medium. Okay. And the first thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna ask you to hand me the milk. Okay. We're gonna pour our milk mixture into our, into our pot. And again, this is two cups, and this serves about three to four people. Mm -hmm. Okay. And next, I want you to hand me the sugar. So what we're doing is we're boiling the milk and the sugar together. No, it's not a lemon. lot of sugar either, so it's not a, too much of a sweet dish. Exactly. Depends on how much sugar you put there. Well, <laughs> for three or four people, this is, you exactly. know. Exactly, and you can use brown sugar if you like that better, but I just use white granulated sugar. Okay. We're just gonna mix that around a little bit. Now, do we want this to boil or kind of just dissolve? We want it to boil. Okay. So we're gonna wait for our milk to boil. If you don't want to use milk, you can always use half and half, heavy mm -hmm. cream, or even 1% milk, but I don't recommend go, going lower than 1%. Like right. fat-free milk, I don't think it would be the be same. It's too watery, effect. right? Exactly. So while we wait for our milk to boil, we're gonna make our cornstarch and water mixture. So I'm okay. gonna ask you to hand me those things, yes. So we have our cornstarch, and we have our water. So again, we have two and a half tablespoons of cornstarch, two tablespoons of water. You want it to be almost that ratio. And I'm just going to spoon our cornstarch into the water. And what the cornstarch does, it thickens the pudding. Right. That's all we need. It. Otherwise, we're going to get a watery sort of pudding. So we're going to put that in there. And Anthony, I'm going to have you just mix that until it fully dissolves. As we wait for our milk to boil. Just keep mixing because the yeah. water is a little bit colder. Room temperature might take a little while, but just keep mixing. The cornstarch is very um, thick or it's very fine powder, so you know a lot of mixing goes into it. So this is. Mm -hmm. no. So does it look okay? It looks good. Do you feel any clumps as you not mix really, it? Not really, not too much. Then that should be good. We'll leave that to the side and wait for our milk to boil. As it boils, let me tell you a little bit about malabi. Yes, tell us. So malabi actually originated in Turkey. And there, it was called muhalebi. And in Turkish, that means custard, which okay. is kind of what this dessert is, a milk pudding custard sort of dish. Mm -hmm. It originated in Turkey, and it came to Israel. Now, when you make this dish, you can do it two ways. The old-fashioned way is using rice flour. Okay. So you use rice flour instead of cornstarch as the thickening agent. With the rice flour, the pudding tends to be a little bit grittier, mm -hmm. but with the cornstarch, it's smoother, silkier. It's just your preference, you right. know. Old timers, people back in the day, they all, they probably prefer the rice flour because that's what they grew up eating. But nowadays, when you go to restaurants and get it, it's used. Uh, they use cornstarch, and it's silky, it's creamy. Right. Okay. So our milk is coming to a boil, slowly but surely. Yes. Our two cups. And if you if you want to serve more people, just you know, times the ingredients by two. Just mm -hmm. increase the ratio and you can serve more people. Definitely. 
So once it boils, we're gonna pour our cornstarch and water mixture into the milk. And when you pour cornstarch in, you have to constantly mix. Right. Because otherwise it's just gonna clump up. Yes. So we're gonna wait. And it's almost there. You see the little bubbles yes, forming definitely. on top? Yes, It's getting there. And this dish, um, it's an acquired taste because if you don't like rose water, rose water tends to be very strong. Yes, and, and rose water is just fresh roses that are distilled in like in water. So it has a very flowery taste, almost perfumey. So if you don't like that smell or taste, then you might not like this right. dish, but very common in Israel. Mm -hmm. I personally like it. I think it tastes very delicate. I think so too. I think with, um, especially with vanilla and this like sweeter yes. kind of dish, it kind of brings it out the, f the flavors a lot more. Yes, and the vanilla is a perfect complement to the rose water. Now if you don't like rose water, you could always use orange flower extract or orange essence, almond extract, any sort of other flavoring mm -hmm. if you're not particular to rose water. And vary it that way, right? Exactly. Okay. Okay, so it looks like it's boiled. We're ready for our cornstarch mixture, okay? okay? So, Anthony, I'm gonna have you pour that in, and it's important, like I said to, before, as you pour it in, constantly stir. It's gonna get clumpy, so go ahead, Anthony. Do you want it in spoons or the whole thing? You can put it in, in uh, however way you like it, Anthony. Okay. It's good that you're doing it spoonful by spoonful because you're incorporating every part. Keep mixing for about five minutes, mm -hmm. and I can almost feel it instantly start to thicken like a pudding. Activating that cornstarch. Yes. Just Do you want to give it a spin? Yeah, definitely. You can definitely feel that it got thick, and it only took that little bit of cornstarch mixture. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Much thicker than just regular milk. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to let that come to a boil as well. Okay. Okay, keep mixing. Oh, right. Putting it to work. Keep mixing. Can't let it stop. Mm -hmm. Very, very popular Israeli dessert. I hope you'll enjoy it too. I hope so. I like rose water, so I'm sure I'll love it. Do they put different, see now you know you used nuts here. Do they put different seasonings or I mean different toppings? Yeah, definitely. So I have a mix of nuts there, but you can do peanuts if you like just peanuts. You can do Walnuts, a, a very popular one is actually chopped pistachios. Mm -hmm. And if you like a little bit of texture, you can do. Um, it's starting to come up. Starting. Yep. What do we do next? Let's lower the heat a little bit and keep mixing. There, I just turned it off, just keep mixing. Okay. And some shredded coconut, that was what I was gonna say. You can also okay. put a little bit of shredded coconut, that's a popular topping as well. And if you wanna go with some spice, mm -hmm. you can dust a little bit of cinnamon. Ah, okay. yes. Or like nutmeg. Yeah, any flavor that you like that you think would complement what flavors are in your pudding. Sounds real good. Yeah, so while you're stirring, I'm just gonna take out a ladle or mm -hmm. something to pour. We're gonna, as you keep stirring, we're gonna pour this mixture into our little cups here. Mm -hmm. So have little cute little cups ready to pour it. As soon as we pour it in there, we're gonna cover it in plastic wrap and then refrigerate at least two hours or overnight if okay. you can. Okay, great. You're doing a great job, Nancy. Now the last step we're gonna do before we pour it in okay. is we're gonna add our rose water and our vanilla extract. So Nancy, we'll switch now. Go Wait. ahead and pour our rose water. Okay. One more sniff. Smells delicious. Almost like perfume. Yes. And then our vanilla extract. And by now you know we've already turned off the heat, which is fine. Our no, we don't need any food coloring now. No? That food coloring is actually gonna be for our syrup afterwards. Ah. Yeah, so we'll keep that aside. And after we added the vanilla, you see that it turned a little bit of a tannish color, mm -hmm. which is perfectly fine. Mix for a little while. Mm -hmm. I think we're good. Do you smell that? I do, all the vanilla. the vanilla and the rose water came together nicely. Yes. So let's pour some in. But even this has a, it looks really creamy, but you can almost kind of see the, the graininess of the cornstarch, mm -hmm. so I can't even imagine flour being right, used, nice. but. They would just take the rice flour and grind that up. Mm -hmm. You might see a little bit of brown in here, that's just the vanilla. Right. And if you don't like vanilla, you can always emit the vanilla as well. People right. make it with just rose water. And 
our last cup. Remember to leave a little bit of room on top. For the topping. Yes, the syrup, the nuts, and whatever else you want to garnish your pudding with. Two more spoons. Hard to resist or imagine that we gotta wait two hours for this. I know, we have to but. wait though. Cause this type of pudding isn't served hot, it's served right. cold. So Auntie, I'm gonna have you actually just turn around and grab the plastic wrap. Yes. So while it's in the fridge, we have to cover it obviously. So I'll help you out there. Perfect. So I'm just gonna cover all of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm just gonna put this in the refrigerator for at least two hours, okay. and then when we come back, we'll have our pudding, but before that, we're gonna make our delicious syrup that okay. we're gonna place on top, okay? All right, okay. So it's been a long two hours, but yes, it has. our malabi is finally done and set, right? Okay. But we can't eat it yet, Ansi. No, we, have we to can't. Try. <laughs> we have to fight the urge to eat it. We're just gonna place it to the side. Okay. And now we're gonna use a different saucepan and we're gonna make our syrup. Awesome. Okay. So turn our flame on low. We don't need it too high. Mm -hmm. Okay. And to make the syrup. We need sugar and water. Okay. That's the ingredient to any simple syrup. And it, because it's a malabi, we're gonna put rose water. More rose More water. More rose water. So if you like rose water, you'll love this recipe. If right. you don't, don't even try. <laughs> but I'm sure you'll love it. Why don't you try it? And then to make it pretty, we're gonna add some red food coloring. So let's get started. Ansi, I'm gonna have you put the water in. Okay. And how much water is this again? That's about one fourth cup water. Okay, and here I have a lot of sugar, but you need the sugar so that our syrup will get nice and thick. thick. Okay, yes. so it's about four, you can use anywhere from four to six tablespoons of water, I mean of sugar. So we're gonna add the sugar to our water. Okay, give it a good little mix. That's the sound of our mixture coming together. Yes. Okay, we're gonna let that sit. Dissolve the sugar nicely. Dissolve. We want our sugar nice and dissolved. And again, like I said before, we used white sugar, but you can always use brown sugar. Mm -hmm. If you use brown sugar, it might give the water a little bit of a brown color, mm -hmm. but the red food coloring can mask it. And if you don't like, if you don't particularly like red, or you have, if you have a different favorite color, blue, can, green, exactly. Yeah, you can okay. use any food coloring you want. Because I thought it would match our rose for our rose water. I think it's a good it. idea. Okay, and now I'm gonna have you add our rose water. So that's about a teaspoon. You can add a little bit less, a little bit more based on your preferences mm -hmm. for rose water, okay? So we're gonna keep mixing until we see everything has dissolved. Right, and it's coming up to a nice boil or, you know, it's starting. Mm -hmm. And Ansi, I'm gonna have you put in our food coloring. Okay. So put about one to two drops of food coloring. There are probably um, natural ways to color your food. I know that beetroot can color your food naturally purple or red. Right. But this is a little convenient. You can buy it at the store. And look at that, already our water is a beautiful pink color. Do we need more or that's it? I like this, it's okay. nice and pink. If we added one more drop, it would be red, but this is a nice right. pink color. And roses can be pink. Or nice yes. and red. Okay, so that's good. So what we need to do now is refrigerate this. We want it to be a little bit um, cool because if we pour this hot liquid right on top of our pudding, right. it'll melt, it'll, it's just two different textures in your mouth. So we're gonna put it into a container, have it cool in the refrigerator, and then we're ready to eat. And it's not gonna take too long, maybe about 10, 15 minutes, mm -hmm. and it'll be ready to go. Mm -hmm. 
so our sugar water mixture is nice and hot. We're gonna pour it into this nice little container, okay? And we want this to cool again in the refrigerator. Isn't that a beautiful color? It is. Okay, so I'm just gonna have you put that in the refrigerator. Okay, okay. remember 10, 15 minutes, that's it, okay? okay. So it's been in the refrigerator for about 10, 15 minutes. Right. And now we're ready to pour. Okay, so we're gonna take off our plastic wrap. Mm -hmm. And we have our cool down syrup. Yes. Our pudding is nice and solidified. Our mm -hmm. sauce is nice and thick, our syrup. So what we're gonna do now is take a little bit of syrup. We don't want too much because the star of the show is the pudding. Yes. So we'll start with a little bit at first. It's a nice contrast, mm -hmm. the pink. And the white, yes. And the white, yeah. A little bit more. See that it's nice and thick. We need a little bit of room too because we're gonna add some chopped nuts on top. And I think that's good enough. We don't want too much syrup because remember it's gonna be very sweet. And last but not least, let's sprinkle some nuts onto our pudding. Okay. okay. Just right on top. Mm -hmm. Let me help you. Maybe a little bit more for this one. The nuts taste so good with the pudding. There you go. All right, you ready to try? Yes. I'm waiting two hours for this. Okay, just remember, very strong rose water yes. flavor, and it could be sweet, okay? Okay, you ready? Yeah. This is good. Very strong rose water, but it's delicious. Very sweet. Mm-hmm. And I, I get what you said about the creaminess of it. Mm-hmm. It's and really I, good. And this, the nuts are a little bit salted. Mm-hmm. So it's actually a good contrast it with is. the sweet. The sweet and the salt. This is really good. You like it? I do. I'm so glad. And I hope you guys can make it at home too. We have Shilpa here with our first dish. What are we making, Shilpa? We're making a popular Israeli appetizer called matbuka. Matbuka, okay. So what, mm -hmm. what do we eat it with? Pita bread or chips. So is it like a dip? Not exactly, it's just a salad. Salad, okay, all right. What goes into it? Let's let's see. Our main ingredient is tomatoes. Okay. We have four tomatoes in there, and I pre-seasoned it with some salt, basil, and oregano. Okay. All right, and then. And our second most important ingredient is bell pepper. We have minced garlic, jalapeno, red chili flakes. a tablespoon of salt, and two tablespoons of sugar. Okay, so it's gonna be a little sweet. Yes. Okay. All right, what do we do first? Okay, so first, we're gonna have to roast the bell pepper. Okay. Right on the flame. Yes. Okay. But we have to cover it with foil paper at first. Okay. I'm gonna take that. Make sure it's fully covered. Mm -hmm. Now you said it's from Morocco, yes. but it's popular in Israeli very, cuisine? Very popular, okay. yeah. All right. It's close to hummus, actually. Okay. Now hummus is uh, chickpeas, kind of uh, with tahini, kind of a sour paste, um, and we'll see that later in another recipe. But, you know, they use it as a dip. We're gonna set the stove on for a medium low. Okay. So not too hot. Right. Not too cold. Cold. Not too low. So I'm gonna take this, and put it right above the flame. Okay. Now how long do you have to do this? Um, 20 minutes on each side. 
Okay, so you're just leaving it there, kind of letting it, you know, not catch on fire, yes. but just letting it roast yeah, nicely. You gotta make sure you keep a really close eye on it. Okay. All right, and 20 minutes. 20 minutes on each side. Okay, all right, so we'll, let's wait for it to be done, yes. all right? Wow, within 20 minutes, how much of it has gotten so much smaller? It's, a lot. It's a a lot. lot of that water is out, but it's nice and roasted, yes. and the flavors are uh, intensified. You know, intensified. The yes. capsicum, that's the, 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 the flavoring yes. of bell pepper. It's come out so much. So now what do we do? So we're gonna take it off the stove. Okay. And we're just gonna put it in a bowl and let it cool. Okay. It's very hot. Okay. And then what we wanna do is dice it up. Right? Yes. You wanna chop it or dice it, doesn't really matter about this. Okay, part. alrighty. So carefully open it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, as you can see, it's charred a lot. Okay. And that's good though, right? That's, that's not good. That's good right. because we're gonna be peeling it off. Okay. So the difference between roasting it and just putting it plainly in the dish is that you get a lot more flavor with this and it adds to the smokiness. Okay. Alright. So we're just gonna. Peel off the chard. Want to help? Yeah, sure. It's a little messy. Mm -hmm. And you're just taking kind of that thin skin, right? You're mm -hmm. not really taking much of the meat of the bell pepper no. off. Okay. Sit as you can see that. Mm -hmm. The meat is still there. And I'm gonna leave a little bit of the char on because I like to add that smokiness into my entire dish. Okay. I'll flip it over. Yes. You can see the oil mm -hmm. is seeping out. From the, you didn't add anything, right? Nope, okay. nothing. That's how you know the flavor is really in here. Mm -hmm. The natural oils have come out? Yes. Okay. And do we keep the seeds when you're making this? or? No. Okay, so we're taking the seeds yeah, out. Yeah, we're gonna too. peel this off, and then we're taking the seeds off, and then we're cutting it. Okay. Okay. Now to cutting, right? Yep. So I'm just gonna keep on the added char. Okay. Okay. I'll take this out of my foil. It's very fragile. So. Mm -hmm. Now, because it's shrunk this much, could you use more of it, or this is enough of this is you know enough to add flavor to the whole dish? Uh, because we're just serving it for two, this is definitely, this is definitely good enough. Take the seeds off. Mm -hmm. It has a, like a barbecue smell. Too. Yeah, that's the point. Okay, so now we're just slicing it. Mm -hmm. I left a little bit of the seeds on because mm -hmm. I like I like it. You like the seeds? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm gonna start with my tomato. Mm -hmm. The four, four tomatoes. Yes. Okay. Good. Four diced tomatoes. Adding on our now roasted bell peppers. Mm -hmm. A tablespoon of garlic. A tablespoon of red chili flakes. Okay. Now you can. Vary that, right? Depending on how much spicy you like. Yes. A tablespoon of salt. Two tablespoons of sugar. Mm -hmm. And then a jalapeno. Okay. It's a lot of jalapeno. Yes. Okay, so we're just gonna mix this in. Good, and how long does it stay on the stove? Um, it's actually for one to two hours. Wow, okay. Yeah, because you want that liquid to really evaporate. Okay. 
and that takes quite a while. Okay, and on a low, medium low? Medium low, okay. yes. And stirring ever so often. Okay. I'm gonna add in a little bit more. Should I okay. say it's a little spicy? Okay. Do you want it spicy? That's fine. <laughs> well, with the pita bed, it, it'll it'll be nice because that sugar and the, yeah. the the spice will come out, and it you know it has a nice balance to it. Right. Okay. And do we leave it unco un uncovered or uncovered? Okay. Just let it up. All right. So two hours. Two hours. Let's go find something to do. So two hours have passed and it looks like it's about ready because the liquid, a lot of the liquid has evaporated. And it's it's kind of blended together, the peppers and the tomato, you kind of, there's very little water in it. Right. So it's ready. Yep. Okay. All right. So we've got this lovely platter here. We have some pita chip, pita bread, some tortilla chips and some bread. We're going to put it right in here. Smells amazing. I think they smell some of the, the capsicum and that roasted mm -hmm. pepper kind of in there. And it's just that small difference that we did of roasting it. Mm hmm. Okay. So, do we wait for it to cool or? It's honestly a preference. Uh, it's actually served cold, but you can eat it hot too. Okay. All right. As long as I don't burn my, my no, tongue. Right. So, it's ready. Okay. So, dive in. Dig in. All right. I'm going for a chip. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for a piece. Peace. Okay. Ready? Okay. Mmm. It's really good. Spicy. Mm-hmm. Going for another one. <laughs> it's 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 sweet, but you can see the richness of the roasted peppers. It's mm -hmm. good. It's really good. Any double dipping? Go for it. That's really good. This is delicious. Israelis Israelis know what they're doing. Without the meat. Yes. <laughs> good. Thank you. Thank you, Shilpa, for an amazing dish. It, it was it was good. It was really good. And Thank you. It's all gone. Yes. The crew loved it. It's it, it was amazing. Thank so you. Israelis definitely know, you know, what it takes to make a good appetizer and a fresh good fresh food. Yes. Fr fresh food. Mm -hmm. They See? harvest what they harvest. There you make. go. Nothing processed. There you go. Yep. And now tell me a little bit about Israeli eating customs. Um, see, appetizers and dips like these mm -hmm. are really popular, and it's there's a lot of it. Okay. So before the main dish even comes, they're filled. They're full. Yeah. Just because there's so much yeah. of it. Okay. So that and, that's, and that tells you a lot. They know what they're doing, and, mm -hmm. and you know, and it's got a rich history. Um, the Middle Eastern uh, food, three thousand over three thousand years of history goes into making something like that, and you know, and that dish alone, good, great. <laughs> Thank you once again, Shilpa. That was that was really good, and thank you again for sharing that with us. And we hope the viewers out there can try it and uh, be able to tell us how you feel. Thank you for having me. Thank you.